Hi, I'm Brandon Grizzly. I'm a high school math teacher. We're going to look at common factoring in a couple of special cases. And the first one is when we have a binomial as a common factor. So you can see here in this expression, we have 2x times x plus 1. And then we have plus 3 times x plus 1. And these are sort of like super terms. There's a big term here and a big term here. Each is a product of two factors. And this one and this one both have a factor of x plus 1. And so I can do regular old common factoring to factor out that thing. So let me just write it here, x plus 1. I'm going to be dividing that out of each term. And so let me just write this out kind of long ways. 2x times x plus 1. I'm going to divide that term by x plus 1. And then I have 3 times x plus 1. And I'll divide that term by x plus 1. And so by... I'm multiplying here by everything inside the bracket, and I'm dividing each term by that same amount, and so I haven't changed the value of the expression at all. These will cancel. I'm just going to cross them out like this. Remember, canceling is really, um, this is this divided by this, and so each of these will sort of cancel to give me a 1. I get the same thing here. <clears throat> and so together, we get x plus 1 out here, and then inside of this, what's left here, we have a 2x, and here we have 3 and it's positive and so we have now factored that original expression into a product of two binomials. Okay let's try another one like that. Let's try uh, 4x times 2x minus 5 and then we'll subtract and I'm putting it in brackets here 2x minus 5. They don't always look this tidy but this one I will do like this to start with. Here again we have a binomial in common one there and one there. So there's an expression that we can factor out of each sort of super term here. And so we will do that. Let's factor that out. Inside here, we are left with, well, we have 4x times 2x minus 5. That we will divide by 2x minus 5. And over here, we have minus 2x minus 5, and we will divide it by 2x minus 5. So here is the thing we are dividing in each case that's the thing that we have factored out. Again, canceling here and here. Two x minus five out front. In the bracket we have four x left here. That's fine. And now this one, let's be really careful. This isn't zero. This is something divided by the same thing. And so this is going to be one. This is, think of it like a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are the same we get 1 and it's negative because of the negative sign here. So we've successfully factored that expression. Okay, let's try one more of these. Um, how about 5x times x plus 7 uh, plus 3 times 2x plus 14. Now, at first glance, this does not look the same because this expression, or this, um, yeah, this expression here, this binomial, is different from this binomial. But I notice that this one, this expression here, has a common factor between these two little terms here of 2. And so I'm going to rewrite this whole expression. The first part I'll leave the same. But the second part, I'm going to factor a 2 out of each of these. When I do that, that 2 comes out and is combined with this 3 by multiplying, and so I will have 6. What's left in here, 2x, I'm going to be dividing by 2, and 14 divided by 2. So I took that 2 out, or I've multiplied it here, and so I have to divide it inside to balance that operation. Let me just rewrite this now. 2 over 2 is 1, so I'm left with just x here, 14 over 2 is 7, and now I have the common binomial factor that I get to factor out of each term. x plus 7, I'm left with in here 5x, and on this side the only other factor left is 6. Okay, so I have, we've done three examples now. We factored out an x plus 1, and we're left with 2x plus 3. Here we factored out 2x minus 5, and we're left with 4x minus 1. And here we had to simplify, or, or not simplify, but factor this little bit here so that we had a nice common factor to pull out. And, and we had uh, x plus 7 times 5x plus 6. Now the other kind of factoring um, that we often need to do, and we will need to do this a lot for 
um, factoring trinomials uh, is called factoring by grouping. And so I'll give you an example of, of an expression that we can factor in this way. They're sort of carefully crafted and we're going to learn how to um, build these expressions so that we can factor them effectively because you can't just have any old thing going on here that not everything is factorable in this way. So for now it's carefully crafted and what I want to notice here I've got um, my terms this is degree 2, degree 1, degree 1 and degree 0 a constant term. Exponents are 2, 1, 1 and there's an x to the 0 that we don't write here. So when they're in descending order like this and I've carefully crafted see these two linear terms two terms that have degree 1 are, are, are special in this case. I'm just going to group them. I'm going to write the same thing again but with brackets around everything. So I've got 6x squared minus 4x plus all I'm doing is putting brackets around things just to see the grouping and now I'm going to notice that if I'm just looking at this little binomial I can factor this. I can factor it by taking out 2x. What am I left with? Well 6 times uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3, x squared divided by x is x. I have a 3x there, and this one here, dividing out 2x, will leave me with a minus 2. Over here, 5x and 10, I can get a 5 out of there, and that's about it. So I'll take out a 5, 15 divided by 5 is 3, I still have the x, 10 divided by 5 is 2, and that's negative. And check it out, I have a binomial factor in common which is what we were just doing. So that's nice because I can factor it out and be left with 2x plus 5. Those are the two bits that I hadn't used yet. So by carefully crafting this, I'm able to group, factor in two pieces, and then factor again using that common binomial factor. What if I had done this in a different order though? Same expression what if I had the 15x first and the 4x, the minus 4x, second? So, okay, it's the same expression, but I've reordered these two terms. It's the same thing. Let's see what happens. I'll do the same kind of grouping. 6x squared plus 15x. There's a minus sign here. I'm going to be really careful. I'm going to add bracket negative 4x. See, I still got that negative sign. I was just careful about where I put it. And minus 10. If I had put a minus sign there, I would have had to change the sign on the 10. That's kind of messy. So I was really careful just to make sure that my minus sign stayed with my 4x and with my 10. Now I'll factor this guy. I can take out a 3 and an x. I'll be left with 2x plus 5. And then over here I can take out, uh, looks like I can take out negative 2, and that's all. So I'm going to do that, minus 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is 2, and I still have my x. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 is positive 5. And yep, sure enough, we get a common factor. It's not the same common factor, but it's a common factor. What happens? 2x plus 5. When I factor that out, here I'm left with a 3x, and here I'm left with a minus 2. And if you look up above here, that's the same expression. We've just written the factors in a different order. So if the order of these two middle terms was, is changed, the order uh, that they, we write them in has changed at the end, but we get the, exactly the same two factors. So it actually is okay if you put things in different orders, but just make sure you keep things in descending order of uh, degree from x squared down to the constant term. Okay, so that's factoring uh, a binomial as a common factor and factoring by grouping, which we still have to use that binomial common factor here uh, to be able to finish. Okay, I hope that helps and let me know if you have any questions.